Brian here. Welcome back to the Angels. Uh, hopefully, I like your new intro. And yeah, this part 27 scratch builds and something otherworldly. So, back to the engine shed. I made this basic structure out of card, then had various forms of styrene and plastic, various thicknesses and widths, and wanted to do a kind of staggered, unusual finish to the engine shed so it didn't all have exactly the same size of planking and basically used a little chisel scalpel in order to trim off those pieces, put them all on in place, and then get the scalpel out and trim all the size. So you can see the little side building uh, to the engine shed, so all done with that strip styrene. So I proceeded to do the rest of the engine shed and make sure that the windows fitted and the door fitted and the card roof is going to be covered by corrugated sheets and some thin sheet styrene to resemble tar paper. So using wood as well as the styrene uh, just to kind of create different textures on the surface of it and the long side of it I put three, uh, four larger beams to protrude from the side to add kind of strength to the structure and how it looked. These engine doors are from scale model scenery and I put them in place just to get an idea of how they would fit the doorway. So here is me basically test fitting it on the layout to see how it would fit into the footprint that I had made that uh, mock-up of originally and it fits perfectly. Put some strip styrene inside so when you look inside it roughly looks like there's a structure there that's holding it all together not just a flat piece of card. I've only done it on one side, not the side with the three windows because you'll never have a look or an angle in there, very rarely anyway. But yeah, you can see there it looks effective and with engine shed doors on, the whole structure fits nicely in that space. Uh, perfect for full length of a steam local and uh, shorter diesel locals. Also, uh, as a point about this build, the uh, engine shed is basically just for this layout, uh, like a few of the structures, some of them are just built specifically quickly without too much detail and not going to too much effort but still making it look believable. That was the whole point of these builds for some of them because I've still to kind of put all those efforts into my legacy layout when I get to building that. But yeah, as we see the train running by and you look at the engine shed in place, that whole scene is coming together, very happy with it. I've still got the coal stage to build in that area as well, and you'll see that in this update too. So continuing with the engine shed build, I uh, put a frame inside basically to help support two LEDs. There will be two swan neck LEDs put in as well. Uh, so basically got the spray gun out, gave it a blast of flat brown all over just to give it a nice prime. And then proceeded to use other colours to kind of change up the variations of tone. But prior to that, I put it on the layout just to see how that would look. Uh, very happy with it. It looks the part and it certainly has enough detail in it to be convincing. So using some of this, I think it's called Dunkel Brown, uh, I don't know what that means in German, but that was the first kind of wash of brown on it, then using cement grey to kind of lighten up the wood and spreading those tones across the wood, just using a brush and putting some on uh, with a lot of water in order to kind of spread it out a bit and not have it too thick. As I've done with the corrugated doors, basically covered them in a kind of grey wash and then various tones of rust. So here we see this local going into the shed. It doesn't run too well very slowly, this local is a little bit stop start, but once it gets going, runs sweet as a nut, something I'm going to have a look at in the future. But you can see the locomotive fits the engine shed really well. Looks great in there. Perfect for a service and area for it, and convincing for the layout and for the time period as well.
As most of you may or may not know, I do have a vivid imagination, especially when I built the previous layout, uh, the 009 narrow gauge NAM68, and the same is said for Angel's Ridge. And here we can see finally the item placed in the cave, something I've been after for a while, and it was basically waiting for the right item to pop up and market model railway fantasia put me on to highland prints 3d and on their site i found this 1 to 100 scale alien statue uh basically painted it up using metal brass for the pillar supports concrete cement gray for the the plinth and for the alien itself i used a mix of gray blue and aluminium basically mixed these color colors together to get a kind of sparkly blue a uh, hue to kind of suggest that the alien is frozen in position rather than actually being sculpted from something. So yeah, painted it all up, uh, done a little bit of black wash over it as well to highlight some of the details on it. But the prints are excellent, I must admit, I, I would highly recommend it. And here we can see it with the wash and then what I've done was stick it in the tunnel and I will be putting in some form of lighting to help add uh, a mystical aura to it. And this is basically something that kind of adds another little hidden aspect. Not too hidden. At that angle you can see it quite clearly. But from the front of the layout you can't see it. I will bed it into space there. Put some scenery round about it. Put some grass, ivy and whatnot on it. But that's basically where it'll be placed. So I basically drew on a piece of kitchen towel, the space I had available, the sort of colon stage I wanted, elevated on little stilts, a set of stairs leading up to it. I wanted it split in two, one half with coal, the other half for tools and materials. Got my WHO guy there to give us an idea of scale and size, always using him when I'm piecing it together. So again, just using pieces of styrene, bits of wood, chop everything the size and uh, glue all together using liquid cement for the styrene on styrene and super glue for the wood on styrene. I'd just like to add that due to time constraints I never actually do a kind of blow by blow build on these structures because I work full time and I've got other things going on in life and to be honest it takes a lot of time and effort to film it all and it would slow up the builds. I make far more progress uh, and offer more to the channel by doing that. So using a mix of earth, old rust and ivory, I come up with this brown to cover the styrene and the wood, just to give it all a uniform colour. And then I put it on the layout just to make sure that I had the tolerances right for both the siding and the engine track. So yeah, everything clears it nice and easy. Basically brought it back to the table, gave it a matte varnish to seal it all, then started doing some grey and black washes on it a mix of ballasts and end scale ballast on it to give it the coal effect and stuck it on the layout. Yeah I'm very happy with how the coaling stages come together, fits that area nicely. Now just to put the engine shed back in and show you how it all looks all together. So here we can see the back of the engine shed where I've fitted the corrugated sliding doors. They're now glued in place. If we move around here you can see how the rusted corrugated roof, a little smoke jack in there, looks great. Still to finish off the main part of the roof. You can see the colon stage in place now with the locomotive backing in. The sanding tower and the water tower and the diesel fueling area. Very happy with how this area is coming together. There's a little overhead shot. 
all fits nicely. Not too crowded for such a tight space, but I am in a tight space. And many thanks go to people like Tony at Tony Northeastern, whose scratch builds have inspired me to do these scratch builds. Guy's a genius, absolute master when it comes to these things. Very down to earth and he's got a great sense of humour as well, Tony. So people like him and uh, Mark and all that, there's a lot of guys out there that are very inspirational and that's what pushes me on. I don't do a how-to, I just show you that if a guy like me can put these little things together, a bit of plastic, bit of wood, buy some window kits and throw it together, you can too. It's not impossible, it's not difficult, but you need to start somewhere. And the more you do it, the better you get. So thanks for tuning into the video this week. Much appreciated. Stick a little running shot on at the end. And I basically consolidated everything into one video. It's taken a couple of weeks to do the engine shed and the colon stage. Rather than put them in separate videos and drag it all out, I just thought I would do it all together in one video. So thanks again for tuning in. Catch you in the next one. So that's me definitely finished now, uh, thanks for sticking with the extra part of the video but I wanted to make sure I could get the lights done, finish the colon stage and get it all in place. I think I'll agree, it looks really nice, it's got that old world feel about it, it's the kind of effect I'm going for, a building that was built maybe in the 20s and it's now the 40s, 50s, 60s and these buildings are starting to show their age. I'm very happy with how the whole layout's coming together. I've still got more work to do down at this end, but definitely up there at the engine shed area. Very happy with it. So thanks again for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, comment, all that jazz. And uh, stay tuned for the next update. There will be more added. Looking forward to it. Take care and all the best.